Databases are vital for every business. But once the database has been created, the question arises, how do you get data into the database? You could, of course, write custom queries and add the data using insert statements, but you'll also want a quicker and more efficient way to do that for yourself and for less technical users. This generally means building forms. I'm Kevin from BuddyBase, and I'd like to show you how we can use BuddyBase to create forms from your SQL database in three steps. We can use forms to limit who can create, read, update, or delete on various tables. We can control which fields users can see and create more complex workflows and approval processes. Building forms is a great use case for no-code, low-code tools. With the traditional development workflow, we'd need to do a lot of work to create a secure and reliable app to be able to interact with our database. The three steps that we're going to follow are to set up the database connection, auto-generate the CRUD, the Create, Read, Update and Delete screen, and to customize the form so that it looks as well as we might want it to. So let's dive in. I have a database with two tables. I've got a posts table, which has ID, title, content, and the date. And I have a settings table, which at the moment doesn't have anything in it, but we could collect settings here. I'm going to use this database to build our app, but you can use whatever data you have access to. Once I log into BuddyBase, I arrive in the BuddyBase portal. I'm going to create a new app and start from scratch. I'm going to call this my blog forms, and I don't want to include the sample data. So the first step was to create our connection to our database. And for that, I'm going to select my SQL and continue. I'm going to put in my connection string. For me, that's host.docker.internal because I'm running my BuddyBase instance in Docker locally and my MySQL locally as well. But you'll know your connection string for your database. And I'll click Save and Fetch Tables. With that, my connection to my database has been created and secured. I've got access to the posts inside of here and the settings table inside of here. Inside of the post table, I can see the title, the content, the ID, and the date. And I'd like to go to the three dots beside the content and hit edit column and change the type to long form text because it's going to be my blog post content. And I want to enable rich text support and save the column. There. That's going to hint to my auto-generated screens what type of field they should use for my blog content and make it an even better experience for my users. Now I'll head over to the Design tab. From here, I'll click Add Screen and select List View and Continue. And I'll create a page for both my posts and my settings, even though they're currently empty, and click Confirm. I'm then asked to confirm which access level I want to set for these pages. Basic was the default and means that the user has to be logged in, but I could set this to public, to power or to admin. Public requires no authentication. Power and admin are elevated roles that you can decide how to separate access to your app for. I'm going to click done and leave it at basic. And we can see it's generated two screens here, the posts screen and the settings screen. It's also added these links at the top. And on each page, we have this table with this create row button. I'm going to click preview and to see this on the front. I'll click on posts. I'll click on one of my posts. And here I have the content of that post. Ber benefits of berries. Berries are packed antioxidants and can help improve your skin and hair. Uh, try blueberries and save. So that has both been saved in my table. And if I went back to my database and looked at the actual database content, found that article that has been persisted to my database as well. So I can update current records, read current records. I can create new records by typing in my title, which might be amazing apples. Say apples are high in fiber and vitamin C. And I'll save. This is paginated, so I can go to page two. I can see my amazing apples post and that's ready to go. So I can create, read and update. What about deleting? So back in the design tab, I'll go make sure I'm on my post screen and click on the table. As I scroll down, there are lots of ways I can configure this particular screen. The columns, at the moment it has the title and the content. I can add more columns or remove some columns here. I can sort, I can add some searching. So I could search for the ability to search by title, which allows me to type in the title 
and be able to find it. And see that in a second. And then we have this show delete button. So I'll check that box and I'll go back to my application. So now when I click into a field, I also have this delete button. So I can press delete and confirm and my post is gone. I can click on the column headers to be able to sort in reverse sort. And I can search by title. So eat, eat more fish or the benefits of berries and the benefits of eating greens. It may be that you don't want to create a full CRUD application for your particular use case. Maybe you want to create a standalone form so that you can just gather data from your users. And that's really straightforward with BuddyBase as well. I'm going to go to screens and add a screen and this time it'll be blank. So I'll create a blank screen and I'll call this posts slash create. And I'll leave it a basic and click done. And I have this blank screen. Now I can populate with the components I want to use. I can click on add component and I could use form block. I set it up, I say it's going to be create and it's going to be for the posts table. And straight away, I get a form to be able to create with my post. I'll need to manually add a link to which might be create new post. I can select from the drop down here and click save. And now my users can use that form and have real clarity about what they're trying to do. But we don't just have to use simple forms. Let me remove this form for now. And instead of using a form block, I'm going to use form. And inside of this form, I'll add a field group. I'll go to form and I'll say this is create. And the schema I want to follow is the posts. I'll call this a create new post form. Inside of my field group, I'll click update form fields and confirm the update. And again, that will look inside the schema and create the form. Now the benefit of doing this way is that for my title, for example, I can configure custom validation for this field. So I can add a rule that says that this particular max length might be equal to um, 80 characters. And the error message, the custom error message for this I want to give is title must be 80 characters or less. So I've created the form, but I haven't created a mechanism to be able to save the form and persist the data. To do that, I'm gonna need a button within the form. So I will add a button here. I'll call it my save button. I'll just say save on it. I'd like it to be aligned to the right. So I'll add another container. Bring it in there, bring my button inside there and tell my container to align it to the right. So what do I want to do when I click this button? Well, I want it to validate my form. Which form do I want to validate? My create new post form. Great. And the other thing I wanted to do is to save a row. The data source is going to be my create new post form. The table is going to be the posts table. And now we're ready to go. Click save and we can test this on the front end. So let's test our validation first. So this is a, so I'll click save. The first step should be to validate. And we say here, title must be 80 characters or less. So we've got a really clear notification that this is where the error is and our custom error message to tell us what to do about it. We can remove that and we can add some content. We can click save. Row has been saved. So if I go back to my posts and go to my page two, and I can see this is a title and this is some blog content. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. So we can create standalone forms and we can add custom validation. There are two more features of forms I want to demonstrate that might help you as you think about building more complex forms. And the first is a step form. So creating a step form allows us to separate out the display of various form components for our users. It's helpful for them to be able to step between various aspects of our form. So they're not being overwhelmed with things to fill out in one go. So I'm gonna have my form have the title on one step and the content on another. Obviously for this example, that's not very realistic, but you can see how to use this in your own examples. So inside post field group, I'll add a component of a form step and I'll bring my content inside of there. And then I'll add another form step and I'll bring my content inside of there. So step one, we'll just show the title. And step two will just show the content. Now the save button probably only wants to happen inside of step two. So let's move that in there. So step one won't have the save button, but step one probably does need a button to go next to the next section. So I'll hit button, bring that inside step one, and I'll say next. And it's one action is to go to the next form step of this form. 
And again, I probably do want that on the right hand side. So I'll add a little container in there and align it to the right and give it some padding to the top. And then in step two, I probably want the ability to go back again. So in my new container, I'll add a button, which is just gonna say back, call this my back button, bring that inside the container to the top. And now I probably want this to be column and hmm, I think probably like that. Now my back button should have a step to be able to go backwards. So change form step, and I should go to previous step. Save, and let's check that out. So I'll create a new post, got my title, my great title. I'll click next, and I get the next form step to create my content, my amazing content. And then, oh, I want to change the title, so I'll go back and change to my amazing title, hit next again, and I'll save. As I think about it, as I save that form, there are a couple of other things I probably want to do. I probably want to navigate to the posts table. Rather than looking at the submitted form, I'm moving on to the next step in my workflow. Or potentially I could clear the form and then I could change the form step to be back to the start again. Okay, so two different options there, just to make sure that when we save the form, there's a next step so our user has something to do. One last form technique I want to show is form conditionals. The ability to show various parts of our form only if necessary. And to do that, I'm going to add another field to my form data. So for my post data, I'm going to add a new column. And I can do this within BuddyBase. I don't have to do this in my database, but this will be persisted through to my database. I'm going to call it category, and I'll just save that as a column. And we have that ready to go. That will run the SQL query on the back end that's going to update that table. I'm going to go to my step two and I'm going to add a new field. So in step two, I want to add a, an options picker. My options picker is going to be linked to the category field and I'll call it my category options. So I'm going to give this some custom options. I'll define the options. I'll say food, and maybe fitness as well. And we'll also add an other step. So now we've got this drop down of fitness, food, and other. And what I would like to happen is if I haven't chosen fitness or food and I've chosen other, I would like to be able to have a separate field to be able to see that. So I'll add another field and this is also going to be linked to my category field and give it some padding on the top, spread it out a little bit, this one some padding on the top as well. So we can see as this updates fitness, food, other, as they update, because they're attached to the same field, they're keeping in sync but I only want this field to appear when this field says other. Okay, so I'm gonna change this to optional other field. And to control that, I'm going to go into conditions and configure the conditions. And this is to show hide and update components in response to some conditions being met. So I want to add a condition to hide the component or show the component. And effectively, I want to hide the component if the create post form category equals fitness. I want to hide it if the create post form category equals food. And I want to hide the component if that particular category is empty. Save that now, preview our form and create new posts. Great title, amazing content. What category? Fitness, food, other, great content. I'll save it. So now categories appearing on this, we've got great category with our great title. So there are four extra form strategies that we could use, having a standalone form, being able to add custom validation to any field in our form, adding stepped forms, and being able to add optional appearing fields. We have the ability to style our application. We can make it maybe this a bit darker, play with each of these. The last thing we'll look at is just tidying up this navigation bar. So I'll do that in links, configure links. I actually don't want the home page. I want the home page to be the posts. So I'll put that to the top and I'll save three dots beside that and delete. Let's preview. We have our posts that we can create, read, update and delete. 
We have the ability to sort and to search and pages for different tables. At this point, we're ready to publish our application and invite users to be able to use it. And there we have it. We've created forms for our SQL database in three steps. We connect it to our database, we auto-generated the screens, and we customized the forms to, to look how we wanted them to look. For more inspiration, check out our templates and other videos on our channel. Thanks, bye.